Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're going to go through a sample of creating an arrow function and understand the syntax of how to make that work. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a normal function and then we'll convert it to an arrow function. So real simple, we'll just create a cube function. And all it's going to do is it's going to return x to the third power, which you can do by multiplying it by itself, like so. Now to call this, all we gotta do is say cube, pass in some value, and we can console log it. Like so. Now when we do a refresh, we get 125. So five times five times five is 125. Now if we wanted to make an arrow version, it would look like this. We would say let, and then say whatever we wanted to call it, we'll just call it cube. cube. <laughs> it's hard to talk and type at the same time. Cube arrow and then we can assign it the function. Now what is the function going to look like? Well, first thing, we have the parameter x, and then we have a fat arrow, and then we have what is going to be returned. So x times x times x. And to call this, it's going to work exactly the same way. We'll console log it, and we'll just say cube arrow, and pass in the value five. Do refresh, and we get 125. Now, you'll often see on the left side parentheses around the parameter, and that's totally fine. Do a refresh and it still works. Sometimes the parentheses are required, other times they are not. So when are they required? They are required if you have no parameters or if you have more than one parameter. So zero, two or more, <laughs> but one, they're optional. So for example, if we didn't want to pass any parameters in here and we just had a actual literal value, well then we would need those parentheses and when we do a refresh we still get the same value but now our function becomes a lot less useful. So I'm gonna go back to having one parameter and having the parameter multiplied. So again, no parentheses when there's one parameter. Now on the right side you can have an expression like so and that will be returned. So you do not need the return keyword. Or what you could do is you can actually put a block of code. In that situation, you're going to need the curly braces. So it would look like so. And when you put the curly braces, the return is no longer implicit. So when we do a refresh, we're actually getting undefined. So if we have curly braces, we actually need to say return. Now we get 125. So when you put the curly braces, it functions just like a normal function where you can put numerous statements inside of the curly braces. So for example, what we could do is we could make a more complex function. And then we could even do other statements in here, such as a console log. And then we just need to be sure we have that return keyword, like this. Now, you can see it says calculating and we get a value. So if you just wanna return some value that is calculated from some expression, you do not need the curly braces and you do not need the return keyword. If you wanna do a little bit more of a complex function, then you're going to need those curly braces and you're going to need the return keyword. You can assign this function to a variable such as cube arrow, how we did it here, but you'll also often see this for callback functions. That's because it's very concise. You can put a lot of information without typing a lot. Going back to the simple example without the curly braces, you can see that this here is a little bit simpler than up here. Less typing, no curly braces, and no need to type the return keyword. So that's how to create arrow functions. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about the value of this inside of arrow functions. Very, very important, and it's one of the key differences between normal functions and arrow functions. Be sure to subscribe and check out that next video. Peace.